Hi, Revive. This week at Revive at Home, I want to share with you a concept that's going to be crucial to you navigating life and living into the good life that God has for you in the middle of this pandemic. I'll give you some framework to understand our current situation and a way that you can see what God is up to in your life right now. But before we get into that, I just want to let you know how glad I am that you're here. We believe that it's no accident that you're here. We have been praying for you and we believe that we're better with you here and that you're better with you here. And we're just so excited that you are taking the time to invest in your relationship with God and that you're being a part of this Revive community. So thank you. We invite you to drop your name in the YouTube chat so that you can say hello, let us know where you're watching from so that we can greet you and say hello to you. And we'll close then with worship tonight led by the incredible Levi Hansen. So we're just gonna get right into the message right away. So 2020 has turned out slightly different than anticipated. (laughs) This office meme sums up so well what I've been feeling lately. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. (laughs) Let's name the reality of 2020. Life as we knew it is gone. It's in the rear view mirror. Our lives have changed so much because of the coronavirus pandemic. When 2020 was in the distant future, we thought life would be different. Like I thought we would all be zooming around on little hovercrafts or Um, We'd have some crazy technology that would make our world so much better. And while those things are true, I just didn't really see the way that 2020 is playing out to be the way that everything happened. I don't think any of us meant for this to happen or saw this coming. My sister jokingly refers to things in her life before the coronavirus as BC, before corona. (laughs) And I think someday we'll look back at our lives, BC, and we'll say things like, remember when we used to give handshakes to strangers? Or remember when we used to just share food when we were out at restaurants? Or remember when we didn't wear masks all the time? Or whatever it's going to be that we're going to say, we don't really know yet because we're not in the future yet. We don't know how all of this is going to play out. And, uh, And so just whatever it's going to be, it's going to become a new normal, but we're not there yet. We've left something behind and we're foraging ahead, but we haven't arrived. I asked one of the pastors here at Lutheran Church of Hope in the the first few weeks of all of this, what they thought and how they were processing how the world was going to look different after all of this. And and he said, it's a lot like 9-11. We used to not think about walking up to the airport gate and saying goodbye to our friends and family at the gate. We didn't even think about it. That's just the way that air travel worked. Then 9-11 happened, and in the aftermath of that, we figured out a way to do things a little bit differently with airport security, and now we really don't think about saying goodbye to our friends and family at the curb or at security, and so we don't really think about it Now, we didn't think about it then, but we definitely thought about it in that middle ground, in that transition time. There was life before, there was life after. And just like that, we're in a middle ground now of knowing that life has forever changed, but we don't know yet what the new normal is going to be. So here's the concept that's crucial for all of us as we navigate this season, and honestly, all seasons of challenge. We're in a between. A between is something in our normal lives, like a job change, where there's a transition, there's a life before, there's a, there's a life after, but in the middle of that, when that, that change is happening, That's the between. So a, a between might be a job change. It might be moving to a new place. It might be a financial situation that we have to find our way through. It might be a loss, some sort of disorientation in our lives. Divorce, someday becoming an empty nester, some sort of health diagnosis, going into retirement, Just to name a few, there's also the betweens of relationships. For those of you who are 
dating and you want to choose to think about it in the terms of being between people. You and I are in a collective between in this pandemic. We're caught between two worlds. What was, what eventually will be after we've figured out life with this virus. We're also in a ton of other in-betweens in our country. There's tension because we're opening things back up. Some people are thrilled about it. Some people are really scared about it. And then everywhere in between, we have an election coming up and we really don't, we're not gonna know how that turns out until later this year. We're not there yet. That's an eventual will be, but we, we don't know the future. We're in between. There's a lot of tension and the need to figure out a way ahead across all of the racial divides in our country to figure out how to stand up for justice when we see things happen that are just wrong. We haven't figured out how to stand up for justice in a way that helps to move the ball down the field. We usually see the betweens that we find ourselves in as so hard and actually the worst. And how we experience those is real and true because there's lack of clarity, grief, uncertainty. We, all, we don't always know how to support each other in our times of in-between because we experience grief in so many different ways. In-betweens, if nothing else, are just generally uncomfortable. Just generally uncomfortable. When you're in the between of life the way that it was and we're not there yet, that just doesn't feel great. Sometimes there are exciting things in betweens, but grief is usually also in the mix somehow because in a between, we do leave something behind. And the discomfort of not knowing what's ahead is hard. So I think about some of my betweens. Some of these are big milestones. Some of them are just life things. I think about when I was moving after college from Iowa to Seattle. I was really excited about this new opportunity, but I didn't know what it was going to be like to live there. I think about before that, when I graduated high school and went to college. That was really exciting, but I didn't know anyone at the college that I was going to before I arrived. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to make it in college. I didn't know who my friends were gonna be. I didn't know what my life was going to be like. And that time of in-between was kind of stressful. <laughs> I, the, there was the in-between of, of leaving Seattle and starting at Revive. I was really excited to be here and invest in young adult ministry here in West Des Moines, but I also didn't know if I had what it took to be an effective young adult minister. Sometimes I still wonder. I also think about like dating and the time between dates. First impressions are like really important, right? but also so are second impressions. And there's that time between first date and second date where you're in a little bit of limbo and you don't know what's going to happen or the time between when you start talking to someone or you decide to go on a date with them and you make the plan between that and when the date happens. I also think about the times where I've learned something about my health where there was life before and then life after. Like when I found out I had to give up the American diet, which is dairy and gluten. <laughs> there was life before, and then figuring out what in the world I was actually going to eat. And then life became a little bit more normal with a different diet, and now I don't even really think about it. So uh, what about for you? What in-betweens have you experienced in your life? I invite you, if you I'm just gonna throw this out there. If, if you really wanna grow in your faith, like if right now in this pandemic, you are ready to say, you know what? I'm gonna use this time to figure some stuff out. I invite you to grab a pen and paper or open a note on your phone and start taking some notes. I don't see you. I don't see you doing that yet. Are you, yeah, oh, oh you wanna do it later? Okay, if you wanna do it later, if you haven't grabbed your pen and paper or your notes app or whatever, I invite you to notice what time this is in uh, the video. Well, it's live, so we'll come back to that. Just notice about where this is, come back to it afterwards because I really encourage you to do this very simple activity that's going to be so helpful. 
This is where the rubber is going to meet the road for you. So write down some of your in-between times it, that you've experienced in your life. They might be big milestones of transition, or they might be the smaller, more day-to-day -day kinds of betweens, and then hang on to that list. And we'll come back to it by the end of this. Feel free to pause right now if you want. We'll still be back here in a couple of seconds when you unpause if you just wanna make that list right now. So as you make that list and think about those times where you were in between, think about how you felt. Were you sad? Were you frustrated? Were you app apprehensive? Were you excited? How many of them did you feel like you were not going to make it through the stress of that between? Were you struggling with anxiety or depression or any other mental health issues in the middle of that between? How is your mental health surrounding going into that between, in the middle of that between, and coming out of that between? The biggest question that I have for you about all of those as you look at your list is, did you survive any of them? If you're watching this video, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that the answer is yes, you survived them. These betweens that you just wrote down hold the key to navigating this pandemic and all of our future betweens, but it's not just about what you did to navigate those betweens. Here's what Jesus, Paul, and many other great biblical Christian mothers and fathers of faith know. The between is actually the place that God wants to transform you. The between is actually the place that God wants to transform you. Father Richard Rohr calls this between liminal space. The word liminal comes from Latin meaning threshold. The word is limin and it means threshold. And that's any point of place or entering or beginning like the threshold into your kitchen or the threshold into your bathroom. A liminal space, a threshold, is the time between what was and the next. It's a place of transition, a season of waiting, and a season of not knowing. Liminal space is where all transformation takes place, Father Richard Rohr says, if we learn to wait and to let it and let God form us in it. An incredible book that I'm reading right now called Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership. I highly encourage anyone who's in a leadership position or wants to be in a leadership position to find it, check it out. In it, the author writes, these liminal spaces that we find ourselves in, these betweens, are a unique spiritual position where humans hate to be, but where the biblical God is always leading them. It is when you have left the tried and true, but have not yet been able to replace it with anything else. It is when you are finally out of the way. It is when you are between your old comfort zone and any possible new answer. If you are not trained in how to hold anxiety, how to live with ambiguity, how to trust and wait, you will run. Anything to flee this terrible cloud of unknowing. Anything to flee this terrible crowd, cloud of unknowing. Richard Rohr just posted, he wrote about liminal space a long time ago, and in this pandemic, in April of 2020, updated a blog post about how liminal space relates to this pandemic. And he writes, the very vulnerability and openness of liminal space allows room for something genuinely new to happen. We are empty and receptive, erased tablets waiting for new words. Liminal space is where we are most teachable, often because we are most humbled. I don't know about you, but in this season, I feel vulnerable. I have felt so empty. I have felt so depleted of any creative ounce in my body. But I also feel so ready for God to do whatever it is that God wants to do in me in this season. I want to be open to where God wants to take me in this between. This is the very same space that the Hebrew people found themselves in as Moses came to lead them out of slavery in Egypt. They'd been enslaved for generations. That was the what was before. 
They wanted something different. They wanted something new. And so God raised up Moses, who never thought of himself as someone who would be the guy who frees the Hebrews. So God calls him to be the one to lead God's people out of slavery, into freedom, and into this next thing, this glorious next thing for them called the promised land. The promised land. So finally, the moment arrived. Pharaoh finally said, get out. He's finally going to let the Hebrew people go after a series of plagues and signs from God. Pharaoh is done. He's worn out. So the Hebrews get the word from Pharaoh to get out. So they pack up and leave. And what does God do in this huge, monumental, transitional moment for the Hebrew people? Take a look at what happens in our Bible reading for this evening. The Bible reading for tonight comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 13. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, if the people are faced with the battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Thus, the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. Here is the reading. Did you notice that God did not lead them on the most direct route? God led them a different way between point A, Egypt, and point B on the path to get to the promised land between Egypt and the most direct route to get there. And it was for the benefit of the people. God was with them, providing a way to guide them every single step of the way. So God leads them from Egypt, point A, to, on this roundabout way, to the Red Sea. And they freak out at the Red Sea because they're standing, looking at the way ahead that God has led them on. God has led them to this, like, terrible place because they can see this body of water ahead of them and the Egyptians have changed their mind and are pursuing them behind them. In every moment, the tension is rising and the the Hebrew people find themselves in this horrible moment where they think they're going to have to go back to a really terrible way that life was before. But God says this in one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible, This is Exodus 14, 14. God says, don't be afraid. Just stand still. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. It's a verse that I am repeating to myself constantly these days. So then God parts the Red Sea. The Hebrews walk in between these walls of water And they walk across on dry land between the middle of these two parts of the Red Sea. Who saw that coming? Not Moses, not the Hebrews, but God did. So God parts the Red Sea. The Hebrew people walk across on dry land and they have the chance to see how God is going to lead them and how God is going to provide for them every step of the way in this in-between, between the what was and this vague whatever it is that's going to come next. Leonard Cohen, the Canadian singer and songwriter, says, It is good to be between a ruined house of bondage and a holy promised land. I don't know about you, but that between doesn't always feel good to me. It's not exciting to be in a between. But these times in our life, of being between two things is the key to our spiritual growth and the good life that God has for us. In a between, we have no other choice but to settle in to a normal of spending time living freely in God's presence and relying on God for our sustenance. Actually, we do have another choice and it's called, I'm gonna force my way through, I'm gonna white knuckle it through, I'm gonna try to get as much control as I possibly can. And if that's you, I very gently want to ask you and also say to to myself when I'm in those moments, how's that working for you? (laughs) It drives me further into anxiety and depression. And 
realizing that I actually have no control over the things that are happening in the world. A quote, or before I get to that, um, so in this in-between, we get to settle into the normal of living in God's presence. And this period is crucial for the other challenges that will come afterwards, for the other betweens that we're going to have in life. Especially for the Hebrew people, this was important as they ended up wandering for 40 years in the desert between point A, Egypt, and point B, the promised land. So in the book, Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership, she writes, God is not in any hurry to get us to the promised land. He's much more concerned about the transforming work he's doing in us to prepare us for greater responsibilities and freedom living. Onlookers may observe our journey and, like Pharaoh, think that we are just wandering around aimlessly, but God knows what he's doing, and he's concerned about strengthening our faith so that we are prepared when there are real challenges to be faced. Okay, so Revive, just like what we've been talking about, we're going to go on a little in-between. We're going to go on a little trip. This room is point A, and we're going to go to point B. We're currently downstairs in the basement at Hope, and we're going to go upstairs. Living in these betweens is really weird. We don't know what's going to happen. You don't know where we're going, but God knows where we're going, and I also know where we're going upstairs. <laughs> so when we live in these in-betweens, it's so crucial for us to just learn to sit and be still. And like Exodus 14, 14 says, to let God do the work and to let God fight for us. Here's the thing that I have through a lot of in-betweens in my life learned about what, about what God's doing in those in-betweens. When it feels like God is silent, when it feels like God's not showing up, when things aren't moving as fast as I want to, or whatever it is, when I'm just in-between, God is doing something. When God feels silent, it's usually because God's doing something. So here we are in the chapel. This is where we would normally be on a Thursday night in the before, in the life before coronavirus, BC. And this is what the chapel looks like today. It's empty and it's kind of dark and it's kind of lonely without you. And there's no activity happening in here. And isn't that just a, a picture of the betweens that we find ourselves in? They feel a little bit dark. I feel a little bit isolating. There's not a lot that we feel like is happening. Things aren't moving the way that we want them to, or God's not doing the things that we've been asking. But while we sit still, remain calm, don't be afraid, and trust that God is working, God is doing something, and he's leading us into something better, but we have to sit in this middle. We have to sit in the between. I'm really excited about the day that we get to be all back here together in this room. And that's going to look different. It's not going to look the exact same as it has in the past. And that's okay because we're going into something new. And I believe that God is leading us into something even better. And so when it is not just legal, but also wise and safe, we'll be back here again. And I hope and pray that that day is coming really soon. And so I want you to have this visual of what it's like to be in an in-between and to know that even in how it, it just looks dark and empty, that God is doing something and he's working for you. He sees you, he sees what you're going through and he wants to transform you in this season, in this in-between as we wait. The apostle Paul talks about this while he he was writing from prison, and he says, I have learned the secret of being content in any circumstance. So Revive, how do we be content in this between circumstance? Grab that list that you worked on before, that you paused the video and worked on, or that you're like gonna do here in just a minute. So just make sure that you come back to this part after you make your list of the betweens that you've experienced in your life. So here's what I want you to do with that piece of paper or that note that you've written um, your betweens on. I challenge you to take a look at them, think about what happened, and notice how did you feel in those betweens, and notice did you survive them? 
How did you survive them? What was helpful to you in those times where you were just in between? And then ask yourself, if I look at this list with fresh eyes, how do I notice how God showed up? What was God doing that I didn't see? And ask God, this is the best part, the hardest part, so we save it until we're ready. Ask God, God, how were you working in my life in that in-between? God, will you show me what you were doing so that I might know or have a clue what you might be trying to do right now? And then ask God, God, what are you up to right now in this between that we're in? So Revive, I encourage you to lean into the discomfort of this between. Lean into this liminal space that Richard Rohr calls it, this threshold that we are on before we cross into something different and new where God is genuinely bringing a brand new thing that we need to be ready for so we can use this time to prepare ourselves to sit with God and then when it is time, God will take us into the next thing that God has for us. So I'm really excited for the ways that we're gonna continue to talk about these spaces between in this series. I'm really excited about the speakers and the lineup that we have. So I invite you back next week Uh, And we also invite you to share this link with someone as a way of inviting them to come to church with you or um, share this link with someone that you think might need to hear this. So with that, we're going to send it over to Levi and he's going to lead us in some worship as a response to us, acknowledging that God is God, God is working for us, um, and God is, is working in us while we wait. All right, Revive, let's get started with some worship. Uh, we're going to sing a couple songs of praise to the Lord, and let's, let's go into this time uh, just recognizing and feeling in our hearts the love that God has for us. And um, we get to sing these songs with confidence, with heads held high, knowing that God's love for us is greater than anything, uh, that his plan for us is greater than any plan that we could make for ourselves, and that he guides our steps. He's the lamp unto our feet. Let's praise him. Good. 
grace, good God. His name is Jesus. We sing that again, swing wide. We sing wide. All you heavens, let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. our salvation and we sing to him we give him praise we give him worship because of the way that he loves us we're going to sing how how he loves he is jealous for me loves like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I am unaware of these fictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me oh how he loves us all oh how he loves us how he loves us all he is jealous for me loves like a hurricane i am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me Oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so Yeah, he loves us love us, despite our actions, despite the way that we live, despite the way that we are distracted from you. God, we pray that you continually bring us back to you and back to you and back to you. 
again and again. Because God, we need to spend time in your presence. We need the transformation that comes with being close to you. God, we love those times when we get to see what you're doing in our life. God, there's such peace in knowing that you're in control. And we give you that control tonight. We need you, God. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, let's toss it back to Jamie. Thanks, Levi. Isn't he the best? Will you show Levi some love in the chat? We're so grateful that he gets to lead worship for us every single week. A couple of things for you as you go. We just want you to know that we've been praying for you. We pray for you all the time, and we want to know how we can be praying for you. So if you have a prayer request, feel free to check out Hope's prayer wall. It's at lutheranchurchofhope.org slash prayer hyphen wall, and you can put a prayer request on there. You can also mark if you pray for someone else's prayer request, and we can see how many times our prayer requests have been prayed for. You can also text PRAYER to 515-219-9093. And so know that you have that option available. We also have a Revive Golf Outing coming next Friday. Space is very limited. So if you want one of the, I think it's eight spots left, please go to our website. You can find the link on our Revive West Des Moines YouTube channel homepage up in the banner at the top and uh, click that and it'll take you to the sign up. So uh, know that we have that coming up next Friday. We would love to have you join us. If spots fill up, we'll have a wait list and we will let you know if there ends up being room for you. And uh, someone also made me a card and left it for me randomly in my mailbox here at Hope. And it made my day to just get like a little Microsoft Word quad fold card uh, with a simple handwritten note. So we're doing this thing called Cards for Humanity and we invite you to make a card, the more homemade, the better. And you can either give it to a neighbor or you can send it to Habitat for Humanity. Details about that and how to do that are on our website. And we can spread some love and encouragement and to let people know that we are praying for them. And so if you wanna make a card, you can uh, figure out the details of that on our Hope website. We'll be right back here next week. We're really excited that you're here. We feel like you're better with you here. We're better with you here. And we'll be right back here next week. Uh, And so we invite you to share this link with someone that you think might benefit from hearing tonight's message. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.